Hey, what's going on, YouTube? Midnight Crawler back up in this piece with another episode of Brews and Views. It's been a while since I hit you guys up. It did fall off for a second, but I'm back. And check it out. You can see me, courtesy of Rabbit Rachel behind the camera. Have a great pale ale to show you guys today. It is a craft beer from Austin, Texas. Mosaic from Hops and Grain Brewery. My favorite local brewery here in Austin. I love what they put out. They also put out Zoe 78271, aka the $55 beer. And, <laughs> and one of my favorite IPAs, which is called Greenhouse. Very unique flavor. But enough of that. Let's get on with Mosaic. Pale Ale. If you're a fan of Pale Ales, check this out if you can. The alcohol volume, check it out on beeradvocate.com because I didn't do my research before the video. But let's get on with the pour and the smell and the tasting. Check out the, the professionalism I'm using here. <laughs> All right, we're using the Texas Frightmare glass from 2016. Got a nice, big, strong head. That's what she said. And yeah, man, look at that. <laughs> Some carbonation as well, a beautiful honey coloring, um, a bit thick, but that's good because that's a lot of flavor we're talking about. Yeah, this isn't your East Siders pineapple, you know what I'm talking about? But yeah, let's get on with the smell. <sighs> Hints of grapefruit, lime, spice. Just an overall array of, and a medley of uh, emotions are tickling my nose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, mosaic, guys. <laughs> uh, let's get on with the taste. Let's get on with the taste. Yeah, the color is fucking fantastic, though, as you can see. Yeah. Don't mind the cat here. Man, oh, that is some good shit, man. <laughs> Complex, but yet simple, crisp, to the point. A very light dash of bitterness to go along with the citrus that you would expect in an IPA. This is a pale ale, and it's done very well. There is hints of spice, like I said. Not overly used, simple, but effective. Love this beer. I think all you guys should try it if you're a fan of oh. pale ales. And uh, yeah, 10 out of 10 for me. I love this so much. It's a seasonal beer here in Austin, so I was happy to see that it was back after like a, almost a six month hiatus. Oh. So yeah, that's my brew for the episode. Let's get on with the views. First up is a first time watch, Mirror Mirror 2 on VHS. This was a gift from Lydia and James from the Austin Horror Society. Yeah, this, I think it was a Christmas gift, and I was very, very pleased to own this because I love VHS. Who doesn't love VHS? I've been without a VHS player for a couple of months until this month when I went to Goodwill and I found an immaculate one for $8. I was very happy to score it to replace my lost one, which due to drunken shenanigans at a party at a haunted house in the middle of nowhere... <laughs> I seem to misplace, but yet I, I brought a baby doll with me with a tentacle on it in its place, and then that was taken from me as well. So regardless, happy to have my VHS player and happy to finally get to watch my Christmas gift, Mirror Mirror 2, Raven Dance, a lot of fun, very cheesy. Oh, also stars a young Mark Ruffalo, <clears throat> aka Bruce Banner from The Avengers. Now here's another gift I got, I think for my birthday. Mm -hmm. This was uh, given to me from the rabbit, the rabidness, the rabidness that went down the rabbit hole, okay. Rachel. <laughs> it's a number set, four out of 15. That's a great cover art, um, Bob Glazier. I just love that part. Just keep repeating, it's only a movie. Kind of give, you know, throwback right there. And yeah, so first time watch this edition. This edition comes, jam-packed with a couple of extras it has a brand new intro with uh, john miller 
Ate the Chosen One and Bob Glazier. That's not in the DVD edition from Sleazebox. This is released by Dead Format Films. And it also contains a, um, a short film, Pig Barf. Anyways, it's a pretty cool little bonus, man. I really dug it. And this movie, if you've seen it, it, it was just made for VHS, in my opinion. Beautiful clamshell, white. Because you know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, it's just, a, it's just so awesome, man. I really enjoyed watching this on VHS. It was so much fun. I dug it, and it gave me a new appreciation to the movie, which I already enjoyed to begin with. American Holocaust, Sleaze Box, Dead Format Films Edition. Continue on with the first time watches. We have the four, the all night horror marathon with the four on there. Uh, Screen Factory release. What's the matter with Helen? It's a little outdated in my opinion. I mean, I love black and white movies. This isn't black and white, I don't think. Damn, it's been that long since I've seen it. Yeah, that's how long it's been since I've done a Reason and Reviews episode where I forgot. But yeah, I wasn't a big fan of it. Thought it was okay. But The Vagrant, oh my God, man. The Vagrant was fucking awesome. Bill Paxton, man. So fucking awesome, man. Really enjoyed it. I believe it's like Mighty Flick. And 92. Yeah, okay. Anyways, Godsend. Damn good. I started watching this movie like three times. And I would get to the pregnancy scene where she's like, you know, delivering the baby. And I'd always fall asleep. And not because it was boring, but just because I was like, it was, I was exhausted from work. <laughs> and, um, the content was fucking phenomenal. I loved it. I love horror movies with little kids that kill people. Just love it. But Godson was fucking awesome. So worth it, man. Loved it. The outing, I'm familiar with it. I've seen it before and I love it. AKA The Lamp. So damn good, one of my favorites, and uh, yeah, so it was fun to revisit this as well. <clears throat> this is a great set, man. You can't beat that. If, I mean, if you get this for under ten dollars, you have four great movies, minus this one, which you know, but you know, it's not for everybody. Definitely pick it up if you get a chance. Next up, first time watch was Le Petit Mort, German splatter for that asshole. <laughs> yeah, I see. This is from uh, the director of uh, Blood Feast, now Marcel Watts. He just did the remake, and I can't wait to check that out because I have much respect for Marcel Watts. Watts uh, Marcel Waltz, excuse me, man. Um, Ryan Nicholson presents too, man. Yeah, I guess he brought this to the American audiences in this release. Um, I know he he did part two, and I'll be talking about part two of Le Petit Mort in the next episode of Bruising Views. But anyways, this one is fantastic. Great gore done by the maestro of German splatter, Olaf Heidenbach, and also stars a beautiful, talented queen of horror, Manouche. She's awesome as fuck in this. And I really enjoyed it. Some great penis mutilation in here. Uh, you know, it's your basic, you know, kind of red room kind of style flick, you know, torture porn. And Olaf Eidenbach makes it enjoyable as far as it, the sequences and Manouche, she really builds up to those sequences. So yeah, this is highly enjoyable. Check it out. Next up, Moon Child. Now this is a uh, release from Danger After Dark, which their box set is up here. I got that and it comes with 2LDK and Suicide Club. Now those are phenomenal flicks. So Moon Child, didn't know much about, but I know that Gat, who is a pop star icon over there in Japan, I believe. Uh, you know, not my cup of tea. You know, even though I love J-pop, more into the females. You know, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, this was a lot of fun. It did surprise me. It had a, um, it was like a vampire movie, kind of set in a post-apocalyptic setting with a yakuza feel to it, some gangsterism in there, and yeah, it was a lot of fun. I really dug it. It wasn't bad. Next up is from Asia with Lust, and this is volume two, uh, starring adult film star Miyuki Yokoyama, who's fucking beautiful to look at. She's in all four films in the, the set. And uh, this volume two, it's a little more serious than volume one. Volume one was a bit more cheesy, well, very cheesy. Volume two was more of a serious tone. And Lipstick was, okay, it's about a crooked cop. You know, he enjoys, uh, you know, getting the girls, you know, pilled up or you know, or, you know, get him, just, 
kidnapping them and raping them. Okay, shit. <laughs> I'm just gonna get to some meat and potatoes here. I don't know how many people are you gonna actually get this again. <laughs> yeah, uh, weekend was okay. Uh, you know, some more rape revenge. This whole this whole volume one, volume two is about rape revenge. Um, weekend was fantastic. I enjoyed Weekend. It's by a different director than the other three movies in the set, but um, Weekend was the best one of this set of this uh, volume. Um, it was good. The sad thing is that at the very end, the seven minutes, there is no subtitles. They disappear completely. I was like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> like, okay, I just went with it. And it's not too hard to follow along. You know, she's setting fire to people who raped her and cutting dicks off. It's not that, it's not that hard to follow. And I hope Troma Films uh, continues picking up these Asian movies because I love Asian cinema and I would love to see more of these. Alright, how much time we got? 10.51. Damn, I'm talking way more than last time. Alright, so <laughs> this is our second take. Next up is Horror Theater by Kazuo Umez. And this is six short films in one collection. These are awesome, man. These are about an hour long each. So this is like over six hours of footage up here. Including bonus features as well. Now, let's get on to... Part three has the present, which is awesome as fuck. It's Christmas tone with the... Killer Santa Claus is directed by the guy who did Dead Ball, Yakuza Weapon, and I believe a, one of the shorts from a Mutant Girl Squad. And Death Make, which is pretty bad. Too much CG on that one. Uh, disc 2 has Snake Girl by Noboru Iguchi. Fucking loved. Also has the lead actors from uh, Toilet of the Dead. Zombie Ass. The Wish was fantastic too. If you're into like uh, killer creepy puppet movies... Horror movies, I mean. Wish is the best, man. Um, House of Bugs, mm, didn't do it for me. Diet was interesting. Very, very interesting. So, yeah, great set. First time watch. Really enjoyed it. All right, so let's finish up this first time views with Class Reunion Massacre and Carnage. Carnage was a first time watch for me. Uh, directed by Andy Milligan. This was a lot of fun. Very cheesy, man. Very low budget about a newlywed couple who kills themselves then they haunt this house so when this new other newlywed couple moves in they you know they, they start their friends start getting picked off one by one or their acquaintances pretty fun uh classroom massacre aka the redeemer son of satan was a lot of fun as well but i hadn't seen this kind of um not the greatest cut of it but i had to watch this this was a gift from vance love you vance represented that georgia North Carolina. <laughs> Why did I say Jory? He's going to kick my ass. <laughs> nah, man. We're going to meet meet up soon, man. Ah, oh, Georgia. <laughs> Cheers, Vance. North Carolina, baby. All right. So I'm going to blow through these very fairly quickly. These are my rewatches. 1990 Bronx Warriors. Enzo G. Costarelli. Love this movie. I'm going to pick this up on Blu-ray. Love the sequence with the drums, where the guys just jamming on the drums. Just fucking love that. Last House on the Left. Fucking love this fucking remake. I think it's damn good, man. Uh, saw it on Netflix, rated cut, so I was happy to watch it unrated. Sadly, towards the very end of the movie, the transfer gets very digitized. Gun Woman. Loved it. Saw it on Netflix like five, six times. Happy to have the copy. Now, the standout about this is when you own the copy, it has a 47-minute documentary of the making. So fucking fantastic. Loved it. Ugh. Orphan. Another rewatch. Love this movie so much. Why? Because Vera Farmiga. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. And last but not least, we have Mountain of the Cannibal God. Love Mountain of the Cannibal God. It's some Sergio Martino shit. It's a cannibal movie. But not a mean spirited cannibal movie, in my opinion. It's more of an adventure movie. And it does a lot. Oh shit, now I'm starting to sound like a fucking PA announcer at Alamo Draft House for Terror Tuesday. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hold on, guys, before I leave. Don't hate. Don't hate. Don't hate. I got a copy. And it comes with goodies. They're gonna fall everywhere. But not in my beat here. Oh yeah. Coming to a demented corner next episode. Haters gonna hate. I'm out. Peace, brother.